Section 22 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Miksha Sutton. Cerulean Warbler to Ovenbird. Cerulean Warbler, Dendroica cerulea, Wilson. Description. Adult male, light gray-blue above, with a distinct white line over the eye, two prominent white wing bars, an obscure black streaking on the back, inner webs of outer tail feathers tipped with white, underparts white, a band of gray or gray-blue usually completely encircling the breast, sides streaked with black. Female, glossy green-blue on the head, dull grayish-green on the rest of the upper parts, the wings and tail marked much as in the male, Underparts dull yellowish white, length four and one half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant summer resident from early May to mid September, locally in the southwestern counties. Elsewhere it is rare and irregular. Nest, a shallow, neat cup of lichens, vegetable fiber, and tree flowers saddled on a horizontal limb from twenty to fifty feet from the ground, often in a beech tree. Eggs, three or four, white, spotted with grayish especially at larger end. The song of this handsome bird may be written, cheery, 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 chee. It is rather rapidly given, with a rising inflection at the end. The cerulean warbler usually stays high in the trees. Chestnut-sided warbler, Dendroica pennsylvanica linnaeus. Description, adult male, crown pale yellow, line through eye black, back greenish or yellowish white, strikingly streaked with black. Wings with two white wing bars, inner webs of outer tail feathers tipped with white, under parts white or grayish white, the sides marked with a broad streak of chestnut, very noticeable in the field. Female, similar but duller, the chestnut of the sides being almost obsolete at times, the top of the head streaked. Immature birds are not easy to identify. They are plain, yellowish green above and whitish below. The eye is encircled with a whitish ring, which is quite noticeable and the wings are marked with two prominent wing bars. Length a little over five inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common migrant during May and September as a summer resident, local and sometimes abundant in the northerly and more mountainous counties. It is to be looked for anywhere in the state as a nesting bird wherever there are thicket-covered hillsides. Nest, a rather well-made cup, which is sometimes semi-pensile, placed two to three feet from the ground in a low bush or in a blackberry vine. It is composed of weed stalks, vegetable fibers, and other soft materials. Eggs, three or four, white, wreathed about the larger end with fine chestnut-brown spots. It has been said that the bright, varied song of this bird ends with the syllables Miss Beecher. It is not amiss to bear in mind such a characterization, for though the bird never gives such syllables distinctly, when the song is once learned, the name will always jump to mind the minute it is heard. Look for these active birds in thickets on hillsides. Bay-breasted warbler, Dendroica castanea, Wilson. Description, adult male, mask across forehead and face, including the ear coverts and entirely surrounding the eyes. Blackish-brown, prominent round patch on side of neck, buffy white. Back of head, chin, throat, upper breast, and sides, rich reddish-brown. Back grayish, streaked with black. The wings with two prominent white wing bars. The inner webs of the outer tail feathers, white at tips. Lower breast, belly, and under tail coverts, white or creamy white. Adult female has but little suggestion of the reddish brown on head, breast, or sides, and the black of the face appears in a few streaks. Two prominent wing bars and the suggestion of reddish color on the sides are characteristic. Young birds, obscure, being olive green above, dull yellowish below, and, as a rule, having a trace of reddish-brown. Two prominent wing bars, face and breast of a decidedly yellowish tone. Length, five and one-half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant, common in the spring during May, sometimes staying quite late, and abundant in the fall, the young fairly swarming through the trees in September and early October. The buffy white patches on the sides of the neck of the adult male are excellent field marks, and gleam like beacons when the red-brown cannot be distinguished. Young birds may easily be confused with immature black-pole warblers, however, and also look a little like vireos. 
The young bay breast is a yellower bird than the young black pole, however, and is somewhat more deliberate. The song is a thin, wiry warble which does not lend itself readily to syllabization. Look for these birds in woodlands not far from streams in spring. In autumn the young are to be found almost anywhere, even in the towns, and they are frequently to be seen searching for insects among rank weeds or low bushes. Black Pole Warbler, Dendroica striata, J. R. Forster. Description, adult male, crown black, sides of head below eye white, showing plainly in the field. Black line from lower mandible to side of breast, neck, back, and wings greenish-gray, streaked with black. The wings with two white bars, the tail with the inner webs of the outer feathers white, underparts white, sides of neck and breast, and the sides heavily streaked with black. Adult female lacks the black crown and white facial patch, is dull olive green all over, yellower on the breast, is noticeably streaked with black, even over top of head, and has two noticeable wing bars. Immature, plain olive green above, obscurely streaked, dull yellowish below, with an indefinite line above eye and two prominent wing bars. If specimens have been taken, the young black pole may be distinguished from the young bay breast by its yellowish rather than dusky feet. This mark may sometimes be seen in the field, since the birds are unsuspicious and may be easily observed. Length, five and one-half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a migrant, fairly common in late spring, from about the middle of May on for three weeks. In the fall, abundant, particularly the young birds, which during latter September may outnumber all other species combined. The droll, unmusical song of the spring black pole will escape all but the sharpest ears. E, 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 it seems to be, the latter syllables becoming louder. The first song I ever heard I listened to for a quarter of an hour before I could locate the singer among the leafy tops of some high elms. Once caught within the range of the binoculars, his colors were unmistakable, but it seemed scarcely possible that the slight ventriloquistic song could be coming from him. Remember that this bird comes late in spring. Its head pattern at a distance is somewhat like that of a chickadee. Blackburnian Warbler, Dendroica fusca, Mueller. Description, adult male, above black, center of forehead, line above eye, patch on side of neck, and spot under eye, bright orange-yellow, back with two lateral streaks of yellow, wings with two wide, white wing bars, which so merge as to form a patch, which extends into the white edging of the tertials. Tail feathers edge with whitish, particularly at the base, and inner webs of outer tail feathers tipped with white. Chin, throat, and breast bright rich orange, fading into yellowish on belly and to whitish on under tail coverts. Breast heavily streaked with black. Female, similar but duller, the black of the upper parts being replaced with grayish. Young birds resemble the female but are less conspicuously marked, the breast usually being dull buffy yellow without any trace of orange, the wings marked with two white bars but not with a white patch. Length five and one quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant throughout, noticeable in mid-spring, as a nesting bird found only in the higher and more northern counties, and usually among conifers, where in midsummer the birds are so infrequently seen that their presence is often unknown. Nest, a neat cup made of fine twigs lined with finer materials. Eggs, three or four, creamy white, wreathed about larger end or speckled all over finely with brown. The nest is usually placed high in a hemlock. The color scheme of this gem among warblers is much the same as that of the Baltimore Oriole, and a full-plumaged male among the spring blossoms of an apple tree is a sight which can hardly be rivaled for sheer color and delicacy. The song is a disappointing, wiry lisp, usually delivered from the top of the tree, and so slight and unmusical as to pass unnoticed as a rule. If you expect to see this bird in its summer home, you will have to look up a great deal into the tops of the hemlocks. Black-throated green warbler, Dendroica virens virens gemellin. Description, adult male, top of head and line through eye, olive green, sides of head, clear yellow, chin, throat, and upper breast, black, back, wings, and tail, olive green, back streaked obscurely with black, wings with two white wing bars, outer tail feathers with white on inner webs, belly and sides white, washed with yellowish, the sides streaked with black. 
female and young, similar but duller, having very little black on the throat, and being somewhat more yellowish on belly. Length, a little over five inches. Range in Pennsylvania, as a migrant abundant during May and September, as a summer resident found in the more northern and mountainous counties where there is hemlock growth. Nest, a deep, neat cup made of fine hemlock twigs and lined with finer materials, including fur, saddled on a hemlock bough from five to thirty feet from the ground. Eggs, four or five, white, speckled with brown, about the larger end. In the hemlock shade during summer sounds the plaintive and musical song of this bird, which may be diagrammed thus, D, 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 E, D. This bird is to be looked for anywhere in sturdy hemlock growth. During migration, it may be seen near the ground in lower growth. During the summer, however, males often sing from favorite perches high in the trees. Pine Warbler, Dendroica pinus pinus, Wilson. Description, adult male, olive green above with yellow superciliary not clearly defined, two prominent white wing bars, and the tips of the inner webs of the outer tail feathers white. Under parts dull yellow, an obscure line of olive green from lower mandible leading back to side of chest where streaking of sides begins. Female, similar but a little duller. Length, five and one half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a summer resident rather locally distributed, found chiefly in the southern and central mountainous counties and more or less restricted as a nesting bird to areas in which pine trees grow, sometimes arrives very early in spring. Nest, a cup made of twigs and fine weed stalks, lined with finer material, placed near the tip of a pine bough, often at great height. Eggs, three or four, white, spotted with brown. The pine warbler's rather dull coloration and resemblance to other species of the family would make it a difficult bird to identify were it not that it is virtually always found among pine trees. Its bright chipping song, which resembles that of the chipping sparrow a good deal, is delivered from the tip of a pine bough, and at such times the yellow breast and white wing bars are evident. At Mount Alto, Franklin County, and in certain sections of Huntington County, I have found this bird abundant. Palm Warbler and Yellow Palm Warbler Dendroica palmorum palmorum gemellin and Dendroica palmorum hypocrisia ridgeway. Two forms of the palm warbler occur in Pennsylvania, both as migrants. They are usually seen near the ground and are especially noticeable in the spring when they appear among the first of the smaller birds. Description, adult male palm warbler. Crown, rufous, rest of upper parts dull olive green, brightest on rump, wings with two white wing bars, outer tail feathers marked with white, dusky line through eye, distinct yellow line above eye, chin, throat, and breast dull yellow, streaked with olive green, belly and under tail coverts, whitish. Female and young, similar but duller. The yellow palm warbler is much brighter, though similar in general appearance. The entire underparts are yellow, including the undertail coverts, and the breast and sides are streaked with reddish-brown. Range in Pennsylvania. The palm warbler occurs as an early spring and mid-fall migrant in western Pennsylvania, west of the mountains. The yellow palm warbler occurs in the eastern portion of the Commonwealth, at Harrisburg, the yellow palm warbler occurs among the earliest spring migrants. The palm warblers both have the habit of wagging their tails. They are often seen near the ground or in low bushes and are usually not difficult to observe. Their songs are a broken series of chips given in a rather subdued voice. Prairie Warbler, Dendroica discolor, Vilo. Description, adult male, upper parts olive green, back with patch of rufous brown, Wing bars yellowish, outer tail feathers with white patches at tips, line over eye, face, and under parts yellow, lores and line under eye black, sides heavily streaked with black. Adult female, similar but duller, the back sometimes without reddish brown. Immature, much duller than adults. Length, four and three quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant east of the Allegheny Mountains in late April and May and in September. It has been known to nest in Lancaster County. Nest, a compact cup of plant fibers and down lined with hairs, fibers, and rootlets placed low in bushes. Eggs, four or five, white spotted with brown, chiefly in a wreath at larger end. 
The prairie warbler is to be looked for in old pastures or brush-covered hillsides, or in low pine or cedar growth. It is rather retiring in disposition. Its song is a series of Zs rapidly repeated. In summer, this species is decidedly local in distribution. Oven bird, Ceruus orocapolis orocapolis lineus. Description, adult male, crown patch orange-brown, bordered on either side by a black stripe. Rest of upper parts dull olive green, a rather prominent white eye ring, under parts white, washed with buffy along sides and heavily streaked on breast and sides with black. Female and young, similar but duller, length a little over six inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant migrant and summer resident from early April to November, found in open woodlands. Nest, a neat cup of leaves, grasses, and weed stalks, arched over the top with the same materials, in the shape of an old-fashioned oven. Beneath the ferns and the low bushes, a small bird walks daintily among the leaves, jerking its tail a little as it pauses to search for food. As it turns, we glimpse the eye ring and its heavily streaked underparts. In a moment, it puts back its head and sings, Teacher! 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 The notes becoming louder toward the end. Occasionally, the oven bird sings a flight song, a brilliant repetition of its usual song, embellished with additional notes and phrases, and enlivened by enthusiasm. End of section 22. Section 23 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in May 2023. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mish Sutton. Northern Water Thrush Through Mockingbird. Northern Water Thrush. Cirrus novaborosensis novaborosensis melon description upper parts including wings and tail olive without wing bars or marks on the tail line over eye buffy or yellowish under parts whitish tinged with pale yellow throat breast sides and belly streaked with black the sexes are alike and young birds are like adults in fall, the underparts are more yellowish than in spring. Length, six inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather regular and fairly common migrant throughout, from latter April to mid-May, and during the first half of September. Some are resident in the northerly counties and at high altitudes. Nest, built among the roots of the fallen tree in a damp forest or in a wooded swamp, lined with fine grasses rootlets and moss eggs four or five white spotted with brown chiefly at larger end the water thrushes wag their tails in a characteristic fashion as they walk among the ferns and mosses or seek their food at the edge of a woodland pool or thickly upgrown stream they are not particularly shy and may sometimes be squeaked up very close their song is loud, bright, and clearly patterned, and has been ably written, Hurry, 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 pretty, pretty, pretty. It is usually not to be found along swift, shallow woodland streams, but seems to prefer more quiet, even stagnant water. Louisiana water thrush. Sierras motacilla. Violat. Description, like the northern water thrush, but a little larger, the line over the eye whiter and more conspicuous, the underparts white, tinged with buffy, not with yellow, and streaked with blackish on the breast and sides, not on the throat or belly. Length, six and one-fourth inches. Range in Pennsylvania, fairly common but local summer resident in central and southern Pennsylvania. Nest, built along the bank of a stream, sometimes not far from the water's edge, of leaves lined with grasses and rootlets. There is often a neat pavement of leaves in front of and below the nest. Eggs, four to six, white, spotted and flecked all over with brown. 
the louisiana water thrush's home is a wooded ravine where a swift stream speeds down its rocky bed amid fallen trunks and mossy ledges here the shy birds dash about with swift erratic flight walk among the mosses teetering as they go or singing their remarkably loud ringing song when they are not disturbed the song is louder more ringing and less abrupt in closing than is that of the northern water thrush kentucky warbler operornis formosus wilson description male crown and area below eye and on the side of throat black crown feathers tipped with gray line from bill which extends over and back of eye yellow rest of upper parts olive green wings and tail unmarked under parts bright clear yellow female similar but duller the black areas inclined to be grayish and not clearly defined length about five and a half inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common summer resident in southeastern and southwestern counties from about may first to september fifth it is a bird of the carolinian faunal zone which is probably gradually extending its range northward nest on or near the ground rather bulky and made of leaves and roots lined with rootlets and other fine material eggs four or five white rather evenly spotted or speckled with brown nests of this species are often difficult to find in southwestern pennsylvania where i first became acquainted with the species the kentucky warbler lives in damp dense woodlands usually in ravines its song is a strikingly smooth and sweet-voiced rolling tootle 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 which has a penetrating quality in singing the males often sit upon the lower branches of the great trees they search for their food chiefly on the ground the black area on the face and the bold yellow line about the eye are striking field marks connecticut warbler operorna sigillis wilson description adult male head neck and breast ashy gray with prominent white eye ring rest of upper parts olive green wings and tail unmarked underparts yellow sides washed with olive green female and young similar to adult male but uniform olive green above the lighter eye ring not noticeable the throat and breast light brownish gray length five and a half inches range in pennsylvania a migrant very rare in spring during latter may and somewhat commoner from latter august to about the end of september this rare bird does not often sing in pennsylvania look for it among high weed growth in fall and among undergrowth in damp woods the morning warbler operornis philadelphia wilson description adult male much like the connecticut warbler but without eye ring and throat blackish blending into a fan-shaped black area on breast female and young similar but with upper parts olive green slightly grayer on head and throat and breast gray lightest on throat length five and a half inches range in pennsylvania a rather uncommon migrant during may and from mid-august to the end of september as a summer resident it occurs only in the northern and higher counties nest a rather bulky structure among weeds on or near the ground made of grasses plant fiber and old leaves lined with hair or fern rootlets eggs three or four white spotted with brown at larger end look for this beautiful warbler in the dense weed growth or in brush along lowland streams it is not particularly shy but it is very difficult to see because it slips away so easily among the shadows the song which is not heard in the fall as a rule has been written chewy 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 chew chew the voice rises on the first three parts of the song and falls on the last two Maryland Yellowthroat Gothlipus trichus trichus Linnaeus Description Adult male 
a mask of black across forehead cheeks and ear coverts bordered behind by gray rest of upper parts olive green unmarked throat and breast bright yellow fading to white on belly and brownish on sides under tail coverts yellow female similar but without the black mask the forehead sometimes tinged with reddish brown adult males in the fall browner above and on sides immature males black facial mask obscured by grayish edgings length five and one-third inches range in pennsylvania a common migrant and summer resident from late april to about the end of september nest on or near the ground of grasses leaves and bark strips lined with finer materials in a swamp or low meadow eggs three to five white sparsely speckled with brown often chiefly at the larger end this warbler is so common that it should be known by all look for it along upgrown streams where weeds are thick and deep or along the margins of marshes the song has been written witchety 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 but this is sometimes varied considerably the call note is a harsh rather loud shkak the facial mask of the male is to be confused with no bird other than the rather rare kentucky warbler which is to be found on wooded hillsides not in deep woods along streams and pools the yellow throat gives a flight song and also has a red squirrel like long drawn out series of chips not often heard if you make it a point to visit a marshy spot in late summer or early fall you will almost certainly see these birds in the deep weeds sedges or cattails yellow-breasted chat icteria virens virens linnaeus description larger than an english sparrow the largest of our warbler tribe adults upper parts olive green grayer on crown wings and tail unmarked line from bill over and around eye and line on side of throat white throat and breast rich yellow sides grayish belly and under tail coverts white young birds in first flight plumage are much streaked length seven and a half inches range in pennsylvania a decidedly local summer resident from may first to mid-september common in some sections absent in others usually found in central and southern counties nest a bulky well-built structure made of weed stalks grasses and leaves neatly and deeply cupped placed in a small bush or bramble thicket a short distance from the ground eggs three to six white evenly speckled with brown the chat has his own ideas about singing he fluffs out his feathers mounts the tree above the brush-covered hillside where his nest is hidden and begins an odd performance he clucks he squeals then repeats several times a loud deep whistle perhaps in his enthusiasm he flies upward to somersault back to the leaves in reckless fashion he spreads the feathers of his dandelion yellow throat and twirls his head as he sings it seems that surely he will lose some of his feathers while he flops about you cannot intrude upon his concert he hears the snap of a twig the song ceases and perhaps you will catch only a glimpse of the olive green back the nests which are large enough to be noticeable are sometimes very poorly hidden and may be found by looking through the interlaced branches of low bushes or thickets hooded warbler wilsonia citrina bodart description adult male forehead and sides of head rich yellow crown hind neck and throat black rest of upper parts olive green outer tail feathers white on their inner webs rest of underparts bright yellow young male similar but the black feathers of head tipped with yellow adult female like adult male but duller the black of the head largely replaced by gray length a little over five and a half inches range in pennsylvania fairly common summer resident in central and southern counties from about may first to mid-september 
nest a neat deeply cupped structure of grasses fibers rootlets and cobwebs placed from three to fifteen feet from the ground in a slender sapling or on a small branch of a larger tree eggs four or five white thinly wreathed with brown about the larger end the flashing white inner webs of the outer tail feathers of this species are an excellent field mark wherever the bird is found it is easily observed though it is very active its songs i have written as to wit to wit to we o given in a sprightly manner look for it in luxuriant young tree growth on partially shaded hillsides in the fall hooded warblers may be silent but they usually flash their tails as they become excited over our presence the somewhat similarly colored wilson's warbler has no black on the throat wilson's warbler wilsonia pusilla pusilla wilson other names black capped warbler wilson's black cap description male forehead and underparts bright yellow crown glossy black upper parts olive green wings and tail unmarked female and young similar but duller the female with only a suggestion of the black cap the young altogether without it length five inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common migrant from may tenth to june tenth and from early to latter september it appears to me to be less common in spring than in fall the john t wilson's warbler with his odd unmusical chipping song has the habit of tilting and jerking his tail and flirting his wings in a very characteristic manner look for him in vines or low trees he is in color a warbler but in insect pursuing tactics a fly catcher as he tumbles after a gnat his wide bill snaps audibly canadian warbler wilsona canadensis linnaeus description adult male upper parts gray darkest on crown line from bill to eye and under parts yellow marks on side of neck black and a necklace of black spots across the breast under tail coverts white female similar but duller with no black on head and only a suggestion of the black necklace length five and a half inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common migrant in may and september found chiefly in low bushy growth as a summer resident found only in more northerly and mountainous counties usually in damp woodlands nest of leaves lined with rootlets and other fine materials placed at the base of a tree or in a bank eggs four or five white spotted with brown the nervous sprightly song of this little seen bird ends with a decisive upward sip if you can catch a glimpse of the singer you will see that his song is a fair representation of the bird for he is energetic nervous and erratic in his movements he is adept as a fly-catcher red start setophaga reticula linnaeus description adult male glossy blue-black with basal half of the wing feathers and basal two-thirds of tail feathers orange-pink the sides of breast and flanks bright rosy orange and the belly white adult female grayish above white below wings tail and sides of breast with the same pattern as male but marked with yellow not orange pink young males like the females but more or less mottled with black during the young male's first breeding season he looks much like the female with the succeeding molt he assumes the plumage of the full adult length five and a half inches range in pennsylvania abundant migrant and summer resident from early may to october commoner in summer in more northerly and mountainous counties nest a deep firm neat cup of fibers cobwebs and bark saddled into a large crotch of a sapling from five to twenty feet above the ground eggs three to five white speckled with gray or brown chiefly at larger end here is a bird well worth finding it is common and confiding 
but its gorgeous plumage never fails to produce a gasp of amazement as though the red start felt the need of making the most of his beautiful attire he spreads his wings and tail flashing them as he bustles about the twigs fans them widely as he tumbles after an insect and pauses in the sunshine a moment between his foraging expeditions even the female spreads her yellow marked wings the song is not musical it is wheezy and wiry and not easily syllabized it often ends with a decisive downward note look for the red start in open woodlands pippet titlark anthus spinaletta rubicens turnstile description a little larger than an english sparrow grayish brown above the edge of outer tail feathers white a buffy line over the eye under parts buffy breast and sides streaked with dark brown if the bird be in the hand the hind toenail which is very long will be noted length six and a half inches range in pennsylvania a rather irregular migrant from early april to mid-may and from late september to late october sometimes fairly common and often occurring in flocks occasional in mild winters here is a bird utterly unknown to the average citizen of pennsylvania it lives in the open fields or on bald hilltops the pipit walks daintily after the manner of a horned lark and if frightened springs into the air to bound away uttering its simple call note sit 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 as it disappears high in air it almost constantly moves its tail in a wagging manner the white-edged outer feathers should be noted mockingbird mimus polyglottus polyglottus linnaeus description length of a robin but slenderer light gray above with whitish line above eye wings and tail dark brown gray the primaries basally white the outer tail feathers white under parts grayish white eye pale yellow length ten and a half inches range in pennsylvania rare and irregular in the southernmost counties where it may occur at any time of the year it occasionally nests nest bulky of twigs lined with rootlets placed in a bush or a low tree eggs four to six pale green blue spotted and blotched all over with brown the mocker's song is world famous it is a remarkable medley of bird songs varied with a few original whistles and cries while singing this bird often leaps into the air to tumble back to his perch with loosely flashing wings and tail he sometimes sings for hours at night while rare in pennsylvania he seems to be extending his range gradually northward End of section 23section 24 of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george meech sutton catbird through tufted titmouse catbird dumetella carolinensis Linnaeus Description Smaller than robin, slate gray with blackish crown, tail, and wings, and rich red-brown under tail coverts. Length, about nine inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Abundant migrant and summer resident from late April to early October, especially common in more cultivated districts. Usually rare in wilder woodlands. Nest a large, bulky structure of twigs lined with rootlets or grapevine bark. Eggs, three to five, deep blue-green, glossy. Nests are placed in thickets or bushy trees from three to fifteen feet from the ground. The catbird's colors, call notes, and manners are easily remembered. He is plainly attired, his cat-like call is familiar, and his jaunty appearance in yard or orchard is instantly recognizable. 
His song, while varied and pleasing in spots, is interspersed with squeaks and chuckles, which are not musical. As he sings, his tail droops, but when he is bustling about on everyday business, he is given to changing his attitude with the passing instants. Now he is fluffy, now sleek. Up goes his tail. He jumps. He flashes his wings, droops them, and spreads his tail. It takes many an insect and berry to keep so active an organism alive. Brown Thrasher Toxostoma rufa rufa Linnaeus Other name Brown Thrush in parentheses Erroneous Description Size of robin with longer tail Rich, bright, red-brown above, the wing bars whitish and a rather noticeably buffy line above eye. Underparts whitish, heavily streaked with black, save on throat and middle of belly. Eyes yellow. Length, 11 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. An abundant migrant and summer resident from mid-April to mid-October. Nest. Large and strong, of twigs, lined with rootlets and strips of weed stalks, usually placed in a bush a few feet from the ground. Eggs, three to six, whitish, thickly and finely peppered with brown and gray. The brown thrasher, with its short wings and long brown tail, is a big relative of the wrens and is not a thrush. He lives in brushy pastures where his rich, varied song, wherein all phrases are repeated twice as the music progresses, is given from a high bow. Disturb him in his thicket home, and he scolds with a harsh chuck, coming close to peer with his startlingly golden eyes. Rightly has this bird been called the Mocker of the North, for its song is a succession of excellent imitations of many bird songs, together with a few which are of the thrasher's own invention. Carolina Wren, Threothorus ludovicianus ludovicianus, Latham, other name, tea kettle bird, description, smaller than English sparrow, but largest of our wrens, rich red brown above, prominent whitish or buffy line above eye, concealed white spots on rump, wings and tail barred with blackish, Underparts buffy, lightest on throat, sometimes somewhat barred on flanks and under tail coverts. Length, five and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A local permanent resident in the southernmost counties, its range is apparently gradually extending northward. Nest, large, loosely made of leaves, twigs, weed stalks, and debris, often almost completely domed over and neatly cupped, placed in a shed or in a crevice in an old log or tree trunk. Eggs, four to six, white, rather heavily spotted with reddish-brown. The song of this big wren has given it the common name tea kettle bird. It is not so friendly as the house wren and often prefers the woodlands along streams to the towns. Yet I have known it to nest in nooks, in sheds and barns, and even in boxes which have been piled at the edge of a dump heap. Bewick's Wren Threomanus Bewicki Bewicki Audubon Description Dark gray-brown above, with whitish line over eye. Wings and tail barred with black. Outer tail feathers broadly tipped with gray. Underparts grayish, flanks brownish, length five inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare, irregular, and local summer resident in southern, central, and southwestern counties where it occurs in sections in which the house wren is not found from early April to October and perhaps occasionally in winter. Nest. Built under or about buildings often near the ground, of leaves, grasses, weed stalks, and similar materials lined with finer materials. Eggs, four to six, white, thinly spotted, and often wreathed with reddish-brown. This little-known bird is all too rare. 
It likes the dwellings of man and in some localities is a familiar bird. House wren, Troglodytes aedon aedon, vieo. Other name, Jenny wren. Description, smaller than English sparrow, tail usually held erect, brownish gray, brightest on rump and tail, the wings and tail finely barred with black, underparts grayish, sides, flanks, and undertail coverts barred with blackish. Length, 5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Abundant migrant and summer resident from mid-April to latter September. Commonest near the habitations of man as a rule. Nest. A bulky mass of twigs lined with feathers, generally filling the cavity in tree, bird box, or crevice where the structure is placed. Eggs. 5 to 9. Pinkish white, finely spotted and wreathed with reddish brown. Nests are often built in very odd situations, such as the pockets of overalls which have been hung in old sheds. The house wren is destined to be popular because he nests in bird boxes, even though they be poorly constructed and improperly placed. So intent is he upon rearing a brood that he builds in almost any sort of crevice, and so fond of gathering and hoarding twigs is he that he fills cavities just for amusement. Such a fake nest, which I examined, held three nails, two hairpins, a safety pin, a dozen matches, which were partly burned, and innumerable twigs. His marital customs, which have just been brought to light of day, are to be talked of in lowered voice. Apparently there is no such thing as a faithful husband, or wife for that matter, among the house wren tribe. Mother or father may leave at any time, and consequences will take care of themselves. Hue and cry about the house wren's habit of puncturing the eggs of the other birds in the neighborhood seem not to be greatly affecting this sturdy, interesting little creature's popularity. Winter wren. Nanus troglodytes iamalis. Vieo. Description. A chubby small wren with ludicrously short tail, upper parts deep brown, barred on wings and tail with black, Buffy line over eye, under parts buffy, barred, and speckled with black, whitish, and brown. Length, 4 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common migrant from early April to mid-May and from mid-September to October 20th or later. A summer resident in the mountainous counties, occasional in winter. Nest, of moss and plant down, finely built, placed on or near the ground in a tree trunk or mossy bank. Eggs, five to seven, white, thinly peppered with brown. The remarkably long and rippling song of this diminutive bird will arouse interest and wonder at once. Catch sight of the mouse-like performer and he may dive for the underbrush. The alarm cry is a double-syllabled harsh note which resembles the throaty chuck of a song sparrow. In migration, the winter wren will be seen about the roots of trees or along little streams. In summer, look for him in deep hemlock forests. Short-billed marsh wren. Chistothorus stellaris. Nomen. Description. Small, even for a wren. Upper part, brownish buffy, streaked with black and white. Wings and tail barred. Under parts white, under tail coverts, flanks, and zone about breast, buffy brown. Length, 4 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare and local migrant and summer resident from early May to October. Nest. Spherical, of grasses, built on or near ground among grasses in marshy situations, the entrance to one side. Eggs, 5 to 8, white. I have seen this bird in only a few places in Pennsylvania. It is to be looked for in grassy marshes, but does not seem to like cattails, preferring coarse, 
rank grass which grows in water or on damp ground. The song, as I heard it, sounded like tick pa chick plick tick 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 These wrens may be fairly common in a certain locality, but unless they are singing or are literally kicked from the grass, they will not be seen. All records are desirable. Long billed marsh wren Talbatoditis palustris palustris Wilson Description Crown brown, bordered on sides with black. White line over eye. Middle of back, black streaked with white. Rest of back brown. Wings and tail barred with black. Under parts white. Sides reddish brown. Length about 5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant and summer resident in suitably marshy situations from latter April to early October. It is very local in occurrence. Nest, a globular, strongly built structure of grasses and cattail leaves made while the materials are damp and placed among weeds or rushes a few feet from ground or water. The entrance is on the side. Eggs. 5 to 9, dark brown or light brown, heavily and finely spotted with darker brown. To find these wrens, wade out into the very heart of the marsh. Here, the clackety songs of the nervous creatures announce to us that we are near the nest. We find three or four of these, but discover no eggs. Patient hunting finally reveals a set of eggs after we have located perhaps a dozen dummy nests. Brown Creeper Cherthia familiaris americana Bonaparte Description Climbs a tree trunk like a woodpecker, smaller than an English sparrow. Bill curved like a wren's. Plumage brown above, considerably streaked and otherwise marked with white, grayish, and darker brown. Underparts grayish-white, tail feathers pointed and somewhat barred. Length, four and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant in March and April, and in September and October. Occasional, sometimes common, in winter. A summer resident only at high altitudes or in northern counties. Nest. Of bark strips, fibers, plant down and the like, placed under loose or curled bark, at from 6 to 20 feet from the ground, usually in a dense, low woodland or wooded swamp. Eggs. 4 to 7. White, spotted with brown. The brown creeper's fine lisping call is not always heard, even by the keenest ear. Its song is a delicate warbler-like bit, which I've syllabized as dee dee diddly dee dwee. This bird begins his trunk searching at the base of the tree. He ascends spirally, searching carefully as he jerks along, and when he gets to the upper branches, he dives to the base of the next tree to begin his ascent again. White-breasted nuthatch, Sita carolinensis kukei, Oberhauser. Description, size of English sparrow, but with long pointed bill, short tail, and short strong feet. Adult male, crown glossy blue-black, rest of upper parts blue-gray, outer tail feathers blackish tipped with black and white, Wings with indistinct bars and the tertials marked with black spots, sides of head and underparts white, under tail coverts mottled with reddish brown. Female, similar, but top of head grayish, not black. Length, 6 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common permanent resident throughout. Nest, of hair, mosses, feathers, and shredded bark, placed in a cavity at from 15 to 60 feet from the ground, usually in a forest tree. Eggs, 5 to 9, white, spotted evenly and thickly with reddish brown. The nuthatch's habit of perching and hopping upside down on tree trunks is unmistakable. 
Actually, he seems to prefer to eat his food thus, making it proper to say, perhaps, that he eats his caterpillars up. He may realize that the creepers, woodpeckers, and black and white warblers, working upward as they do, find the insects which can be seen from below or from the side, while he prefers to investigate the crannies that these other birds may pass by. This neighborly winter bird visits the food counter regularly and is very fond of suet. He has the habit of hiding food in the bark of trees. I once saw a nuthatch thus hoarding sunflower seeds. At least a full hour he worked, hiding dozens of the little kernels. He was watched and followed by a pair of lazy downy woodpeckers who deliberately ate the seeds as fast as the nuthatch could hide them. The nuthatch, it appeared, has great faith in his ability to hide food where it cannot be found, so great a faith, in fact, that he did not properly guard his store. He calls, Dree, 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 in a nasal voice as he busies himself with pounding at a bit of food. As he looks out from the trunk, his neck is bent from his body at even more than a right angle, yet he does not seem to tire of these strained attitudes. Red-breasted nuthatch, Sita canadensis, Linnaeus. Description, smaller than English sparrow, male, crown with wide line through eye to back of head, glossy black, line over eye, white, rest of upper parts, bluish gray, the outer tail feathers blackish with white spots near their tips, Underparts, pale reddish buff, save on throat, which is whitish. Female, similar, but duller, the black of the head replaced with gray. Length, four and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant in late April and May, and more or less throughout the fall. Occasional in winter, sometimes abundant. Nests, rarely in northern counties and at high altitudes. Nest, of mosses, hair, and such soft materials, in a cavity, often in a conifer. Eggs, four to seven, white, speckled with brown and gray. The red-breasted nuthatch's mouse-like body seems strangely small as it moves about the great trunk of a high hemlock far from the ground. As it disappears behind the tree, we hear its querulous, complaining, na 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 as it searches for insects. During migration, it is often to be seen about the outer twigs where it sometimes hangs upside down, like a chickadee. On the tree trunks, its actions are much the same as those of its larger relative, the white-breasted nuthatch. Tufted titmouse, Baolophus bicolor, Linnaeus. Description, size of English sparrow with prominent crest. Upper parts gray, forehead dark brown, a light spot in front of and above eye. Under parts grayish white, the sides washed with reddish brown. Length, six inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common permanent resident in southern and middle counties, gradually extending its range northward. Nest. Mass of leaves, mosses, hair, and feathers, placed in a cavity at from 10 to 30 feet from the ground. Eggs, 5 to 8, white, spotted and blotched with reddish brown. A small gray bird with a noticeable crest is likely to be the tufted tit. He is fond of the lower branches and is almost never seen perching on a treetop, where the cedar waxwing, another crested species, prefers to watch for passing insects. The song, which is a musical whistle, may be written wheedle, wheedle, wheedle. He has other call notes which resemble those of the chickadee. In his nest, he gives a snake-like hiss. Like the chickadee, the tufted tit is an acrobat. He pounds away at a rolled leaf or at a beech nut hanging upside down on a slender twig. He may carry food about with him in his feet, but nesting material is gathered with the bill. End of section 24. Read by Carolyn Seifarth, June 2023.
Section 25 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Meeksh Sutton. Black Capped Chickadee through Bluebird. Black Capped Chickadee. Panthestes atricopilus atricopilus. Linnaeus. Description. Smaller than English sparrow. Top of head and throat black. Cheeks white. Rest of upper parts grayish. Under parts grayish white washed with brownish on sides. Length. Five inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common permanent resident, usually more numerous about towns in winter than in summer. Nest of fur, plant down, and feathers couched in moss and bark strips, placed in a cavity in a tree, usually from 5 to 15 feet from the ground. The birds often dig their own nest cavity. Eggs, 5 to 9, white, spotted with brown, often chiefly at larger end. The friendly, jolly chickadee is one of our most popular birds. He calls his name plainly, and his color pattern is distinctive. In spring, he has a plaintive love call, which sounds like, Fee, bee! An imitation of this whistle often brings the bird very close. In winter, chickadees may visit the lunch counter daily, but in summer, when the duties of family rearing are pressing, they may not be seen for weeks at a time. For this reason, they are frequently considered as winter birds. In late summer and autumn, the family groups wander about among the trees, searching for caterpillars and insect eggs, and calling sociably to one another. The Carolina chickadee, Panthestes carolinensis carolinensis, a slightly smaller species, with almost precisely the same coloration as the black-capped chickadee, is to be found locally in the southernmost counties. Golden crowned kinglet, Regulus regulus satrapa, Liechtenstein. Description Size very small, one of our smallest birds. Tail somewhat forked. Male, center of crown red orange, bordered with yellow, which sometimes conceals the orange, and with black. Line above eye whitish, rest of upper parts olive gray, wings with an indistinct bar tail and rump with greenish edgings, underparts pale gray, washed with olive and dull yellowish. Length, 4 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant and winter resident from about the 1st of October to the end of April. It has been known to nest in the higher mountains, but it is exceedingly rare as a summer bird. The golden-crowned kinglet is most noticeable as a winter bird when many of our familiar species are to the southward. It is a tiny bit of feathers, and as it perches on its slender legs, it seems to be too fragile to endure the snow and cold weather. The call note is a short lisping tee, repeated three or four times. In spring, it gives a song which starts with several wiry notes resembling one note given by the chickadee and ending with an abbreviated series of chips. Golden crowns like to hunt for food in coniferous trees. Ruby-crowned kinglet. Corthelio calendula calendula. Linnaeus. Description. Size very small. Tail somewhat forked. Adult male grayish olive above, grayest on head, greenest on rump, crown with brilliant red patch which is sometimes concealed, wings with two indistinct bars, underpart soiled white washed with faint yellowish and olive, length four and a half inches, range in Pennsylvania, a migrant, usually common, from mid-April to mid-May, and from mid-September to latter October. The song of the tiny ruby crown is amazingly loud and brilliant, and as the little creature sings, it may lift and fan out its startling crest. It is usually to be found in small trees or thickets, where it flits about, snapping up insects, and it often comes close at hand, 
when its bright eyes have a staring quality. Occasionally it flicks its wings. Its alarm note may be written cheda, rapidly given. Blue-gray gnatcatcher, polyoptila, chirulea, chirulea, lineus. Description, size very small with long tail and short wings. Male, upper parts blue-gray, a line across forehead and above eye white, bordered above by narrow black line. Central tail feathers black, the outer ones white. Underparts soiled whitish. Female, similar, the black of the head, duller or missing. Length, four and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather local summer resident in southern counties. Nest, a beautifully made structure of fur, plant fibers, and bark covered with lichens and dried flower petals held in place with cobwebs from 15 to 40 feet from the ground on a horizontal branch. Eggs, 3 to 5, pale blue, rather heavily spotted with brown. This dainty little creature is restless. His tail wags or shakes almost constantly as he pursues insects. His usual cry is a complaining, No! No! whined as he hops about among the foliage. Both birds assist in covering the nest with lichens, which they gather from nearby tree trunks, and which they bind into the structure with cobwebs so that it is firm and neat. The male may, at times, be rather noisy about the family secrets, and if we patiently watch him as he flits through the branches, he may lead us to the nest. Wood thrush, Ilochichla mustelina, Jimlin. Description, smaller than robin, rich brown above, brightest on head and neck, with noticeable whitish eye ring, below white, marked all over, with round black spots, eyes large, very dark brown, length, 8 inches, range in Pennsylvania, common migrant and summer resident from about the 1st of May to October, it is not found in dense hemlock woods in the wilder districts, nor at higher altitudes. Nest, a firm, neat cup of grasses, weed stalks, paper, string, and leaves, lined with finer materials, with an inner wall of mud, placed from 5 to 20 feet from the ground in a tree. Eggs, 3 or 4, pale blue, much like those of the robin in color, but smaller. This is the largest, brightest, and most strikingly marked of our thrushes, and he is the only one whose underparts are marked all over with round black spots. The wood thrush lives in shady lawns as well as in wilder woodlands. He is often a familiar dooryard bird, hopping about on the grass or singing from a low perch. The song is delivered in sections with pauses of a few seconds between. Some of the notes are rich and deep, others are high and flute-like, others tremble like a twanged banjo string. The alarm note is loud and sharp. Wilson's Thrush, Viri, Ilochichla Fuscheshus Fuscheshus, Stevens. Description, smaller than robin, uniform brown above, throat and belly white sides of throat and breast washed with buffy and marked with indistinct rows of short brown streaks, sides white, faintly washed with gray-brown, eye-ring not noticeable in field, length seven and a half inches, range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant throughout in later April and May and in September, nests in the more northerly counties and in the mountains, it is common as a summer resident in suitable damp woodlands. Nest, on the ground, made largely of leaves, lined with rootlets and small grasses. Eggs, three or four, delicate greenish-blue. Go to a wooded swamp or to low, thick woodlands to find this elusive bird. If you keep quiet for a time, you may see his brown back as he flashes through the undergrowth. Make a slight disturbance, and he may call zoo in a penetrating tone. 
He may sing his remarkable ringing song, which, in liquid, tinkling, descending spirals, sounds a little like, very, 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 very. If you become familiar with him, you will see him hopping over the ground like a wood thrush. He snaps up an insect here and there, or flops the damp leaves over looking for food. Gray-cheeked thrush, Ilochichla minima alicia, Baird. Description. Upper parts olive, unmarked, not even a whitish eye ring being noticeable in the field. Sides of head, dull grayish. Sides of throat and breast, faintly washed with buff, the breast marked with a few dark streaks, which lie in rows. Throat and belly white, sides gray. Length, seven and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A regular migrant, though not often recorded, during May and in late September and early October. This bird is difficult to identify in Pennsylvania. It does not often sing, and it is shy. Probably it is commoner than we suppose, but the thrushes look so much alike that we are afraid to record the species unless we have a specimen in hand. It resembles most closely the olive-backed thrush. It differs in having a dull whitish eye ring and grayish cheeks, which in the olive back are distinctly buffy. Records of this species should be made with a good glass. The song, which may occasionally be given here, is like a viris. Olive-backed thrush, Iluchichla ustulata swainsoni, Chudi. Description, upper parts olive, Eye ring and sides of head buffy, the color spreading more or less over the face, throat, and breast. Throat streaked and breast somewhat spotted with blackish. Belly white, sides grayish. Length a little over seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania. An abundant migrant in late April and early May and in September and October rare as a summer resident, found only at high altitudes in the mountains. Nest, deeply cupped, compact, and neat, of grasses, moss, rootlets, and twigs, placed in a forest tree from 6 to 20 feet from the ground. Eggs, 3 or 4, pale blue, spotted or blotched with red-brown. The olive-back's song is a little like the wood thrush's, but is longer, and it usually ascends the scale, in this respect differing from the viris. Its buffy eye ring is usually a dependable field mark. The alarm note may be written, pert, pronounced in front of the teeth. Hermit thrush, Ilochichla guttata faxoni, bangs and penard. Description. Underparts olive brown with a somewhat noticeable buffy eye ring and a noticeably red brown tail, which is the most dependable field mark. Throat and breast washed with buffy, the breast marked with rows of short, blackish, rounded streaks. Belly white, sides grayish brown. Length a little over seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant, appearing early in spring, often during March, and remaining late in fall, often until November or even Christmas. It is casual in winter. As a nesting bird, it is rather rare, occurring in the northern counties and at high altitudes. Nest, usually on the ground, of leaves, rootlets, grasses, and moss, lined with finer materials. Eggs, three or four, greenish-blue. The hermit thrush's red-brown tail is usually a good field mark because it shows plainly, even as the bird flies away. It should not be confused with the fox sparrow, however, which has a brown back and bright red-brown tail, and which, curiously enough, occurs as an early spring or late fall migrant at about the same time as the hermit thrush. The song of the hermit thrush is thought by some to be the highest point attained in American bird music. It may be described as an elaborated and refined wood thrush song given in deliberate, easy manner, often in the evening and sometimes virtually at nightfall. Robin, Turdos 
Migratorios, Migratorios, Lineos. Description. Adult male. Head blackish. Partial white eye ring. Rest of upper parts gray, darker on wings and tail. Outer tail feathers narrowly tipped with white. Throat white, streaked with black. Breast and sides brownish red, sometimes somewhat barred with whitish. Belly and undertail coverts white, the latter sometimes marked with grayish. Eyes dark brown. Female, duller. Young, the breasts are spotted with black. Length, 10 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Abundant migrant and summer resident, appearing early in spring, sometimes in February or March, and lingering often until November. Casual in winter, when it is likely to be seen in flocks. Nest, a firm, neatly cupped structure of grasses, weed stalks, string, and so forth, with an inner lining of mud, placed in trees, on window sills, under porches, and sometimes on the ground. Eggs, three or four, pale blue. The quiet, home-like beauty of the robin appeals to every American. As the trim bird runs about the dew-drenched lawn, he seems to impart to us his own belief in the goodness of life. He pauses to listen for an earthworm as it scratches its way along its dark tunnel. But if he does not catch the worm, he looks up brightly, runs nimbly a few feet further on, and listens again firm in his knowledge that he will sooner or later come into his own and catch a worm perhaps even longer than the one he missed. The spotted breasts of the young bespeak kinship with the thrushes. Bluebird, Cialis, 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 Lineus. Description, a little larger than an English sparrow, adult male, rich, deep, glossy blue above. Throat, breast, and sides reddish-brown. Belly and under-tail coverts white. Female, similar, but upper parts largely gray, bluest on wings and tail. Young, similar to female, but with spotted breast. Length, 6 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant and summer resident from early March until November. Casual in winter. It is to be found chiefly in more cultivated districts. Nest of grasses in a cavity in a tree or bird box from 5 to 20 feet from the ground. The soft, brief warble of the bluebird in spring and the gentle farewell it sings in the fall as it flies over are to be classed among the sweetest of bird music, to my way of thinking. The bluebird is not only beautiful in song and in color, but it is decidedly beneficial, and since it rears two or three broods of young a year, when it can, it destroys much insect life in feeding the hungry young, which eat proportionately more than their parents. The bluebird's interesting habit of lifting its wing after alighting, or as it sings, is characteristic. End of section 25. Read by Carolyn Seifarth, June 2023. End of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Meeks Sutton